Property Tribes on location at the Property Investor Show and this is a great place to capture industry reactions to the government press release this morning concerning Section 21. And I'm joined now by property commentator and analyst Kate Faulkner. And Kate, we knew that this was in the pipeline. Yep. Um, we've had the actual communication today. Um, just interested to, to get your reaction to it. What Was it what you were expecting? Um, not really. I'm disappointed, if I'm honest. Um, so one of the things we've been trying to feed back to the government, and indeed um, Julie Rugg, res really respected and fantastic academic, has uh, made this point in her report last year. It's one of the problems with the private rented sector, which makes life difficult both for tenants and landlords, is the fact that what they're, what they're doing is just keep tinkering with bits. Yes. And what Julie Rugg suggested was not to do this and was to actually review how the assured short-told tenancy agreement worked. And she's absolutely right. And unfortunately, I just don't understand why they're not listening to people like Julie, who's an independent, respected person, She's not got any interests involved apart from being straight with people. We've all been saying the same thing. Let's review the whole thing. And to be honest, I don't, the real sad thing is they're making all this noise. I don't think it's going to make a blind bit of difference. I think you're right. What it seems to me is that they've got a few pieces of the jigsaw puzzle of the private rented sector, but they can't see the picture on the box. And the picture on the box is that most landlords um, and certainly in my experience of, of my career of being a landlord, I've only ever evicted a tenant for two reasons, and that was non-payment of rent or the tenant damaging the property. Um, I, I don't really understand, perhaps I'm missing something, where this, um, this, this difference is with this new legislation that they're prop proposing, apart from to go the Section 8 route instead. Yeah, it's just so... I'm exactly right. I mean, we do the Belvoir Index and we do a survey along with that and we ask them every quarter why you, if you have evicted a tenant, how many? And it's tiny. It's like tiny amounts amongst tens of thousands of tenants that they have. The chances of you going with a good letting agent and being evicted are incredibly low. Um, and what, we've, what I find is when I ask them, it's uh, rent arrears or it'll be... Um, Yes, the tenant damaging the property in some way, shape or form. But one of, the, one of the ironies is, at the moment, it's landlords selling properties because of Section 24 and they can't make the model pay. So what they're saying is, oh, well, this is going to be fantastic because you won't get evicted. Well, how are you going to stop ten landlords evicting people because you have to sell the property because now it's not profitable? Um, your tenant is in arrears, well they can't stop them from selling, from getting rid of the tenant for that reason. Or indeed, quite a lot of people want to come, want to go back and move back into the property. So I think it's almost, so with the tenancy deposit scheme for example, the claims I believe at the start were something like 20% of landlords were illegally hanging on to tenants rent. Well now that we've got the tenancy deposit scheme, we know it's less than 2%, even less than 1%. So, and I think we're in the same boat. And I just think, really, I'm just so sad that they're not listening um, to the industry, academic experts. Let's redo the assured short old tenancy agreement. Because this will make no difference whatsoever, in my opinion. It's a complete and utter waste of time. And sadly, you know, they're talking about families being evicted. It's the biggest reason for homelessness. What they're forgetting is that's because they messed up universal credit so a lot of landlords aren't renting to people on universal credit because they didn't get paid, just as social landlords didn't either. So they've pulled out of that market. That's the reason for homelessness, as well as landlords selling because they can't make it pay. So the government's caused <laughs> the rise in homelessness, particularly for families who are on benefits. And now they're trying to say, well, now we're going to solve the problem. Well, it won't. <laughs> No, I totally agree with you and I think that actually the statistics show that it's actual social housing landlords who use Section 21 far more than private sector landlords. So why are they only bringing this legislation in for the private sector? 
Yeah, it, it's crazy. I think the social landlords work in a slightly different way. So, but they are also evicting people. Well, what I want to know is where do those people go? Because if you fall out of social housing, what happens to you? And um, it's, I just think it's just such a shame. Because if they actually listened and talked to the industry, we could come up with a much better way of doing this. And uh, we were doing um, uh, an expert panel yesterday and John Stewart from the RLA, he was really interesting. He was saying actually the new Scottish system, for example, where they have thrown out the AST, he said it does appear to be working. And it appears to not be as frightening as it perhaps uh, was initially. So why don't they just give the Scottish system another year and then let's come up with our own version when we understand the pros and cons of what Scotland have done. It's just, I, I just think it's a waste of time. And the worst thing is, it's not going to make a blind bit of difference to tenants. Mm, that's true. And I'm, I'm fed up of legislation coming in and it doesn't make any difference. So licensing is another one whereby vast amounts of money has been taken out of landlord, uh, landlord's bank accounts that could be invested in new homes for tenants, that could be invested in renovation. And what are they doing? It's just going into the pockets of local authorities. And I don't mind that if they went and visited the properties in the first place. But all the, it's all paperwork and admin and they don't visit the properties. So it's another one of, oh, this is just, please, please stop tinkering. Let's sit down, let's rebuild how the private sector needs to work and let's make it work for landlords and tenants. It's not hard. Exactly. Well, 100%, Kate, agree with you. And I, I, I don't know why James Brokenshaw said in the press release that it was the biggest change in the private rented sector in a generation because it, it just seems like a dilution of Section 21 rather than anything more drastic. Um, I think, you know, landlords, I think you say it's not going to really make much difference, but I think it's showing the direction of travel that the te pendulum is swinging from the landlords are having having the power, if you want to call it that, in a tenancy agreement through to the tenant. And that's no bad thing when you've got rogue landlords who are dictating to tenants and, and, and treating them badly. But it seems that, you know, a pendulum always has to swing too far the other way before it comes back into the middle. And it kind of feels that we're in that stage now. I think, I think it's almost even worse than that. So they introduced licensing and that was going to sort everything out as far as rogue landlords are concerned. We've got rogue landlord registered everything. Well, if all of that is working, why do they have to do this now? And now you've got Section 20. Retaliation and eviction, that's done nothing. Licensing, hardly prosecuting a landlord, hardly doing anything versus the cost. It's extraordinarily expensive. And now we've got something else which is not going to do a thing. Um, and I just think, I just, I don't understand what more we have to do to try and help MPs understand that this is just wasting everybody's time and not helping tenants. We could help them so much if they would just listen and stop tinkering around yeah. doing something else, which it just won't work. And it, or it causes collateral damage. And actually part of the collateral damage might be that some landlords say, actually, this is the last straw that broke the camel's back. Maybe I'm an elderly landlord. I was going to retire in five years. I think I'll pack it in now. So it's going to, you know, it's a direction of travel, anti-landlord, hammering landlords, um, making life harder for landlords. All of this is adding up. And I think more and more landlords are going to see the direction of travel and think, I've had enough. Well, uh, the English housing stats showed that 200,000 homes had come out of the private rented sector last year, first big change like that in 20 years. And then you kind of think, hmm, and homelessness has gone up? And private rented sector is the main reason for that? Well, has anybody looked at what's happening to the houses where people have been made homeless? Because do you know what? If that's 200,000 sales from landlords, I don't think it is, but say it was, well, funnily enough, you caused it in the first place, you know, and I want to work with the government and I want to get a good result for landlords, as much, you know, and for tenants. But actually, if they don't listen and they're just coming up with one rule after the other, which is costing the industry time and money and not making a difference, when are they going to stop? Because they're just chasing the tail at the moment, causing problems, trying to do something else to stop the problem and causing another. Yep. What's the point? No, I, I couldn't agree with you more. It's just a case of completely 
unjoined up thinking and as you say just tinkering and pulling levers here and there and then it affects something else and ultimately it's 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 just making it even harder for landlords to understand how to exist in the private rented sector i think the only positive thing that i can see out of this is that if more landlords go the section 8 route there'll be much more data on how many landlords are evicting for rent arrears and that could be the one positive thing that government is getting a, a message about the level of rent arrears in the sector it's a good point but it's a bit drastic <laughs> They could just ask a few more questions when they put in the section 21 and do it that way. <laughs> then we'd have the data in a year and we'd know how to do it. But it is just flawed thinking, I'm afraid. And uh, I'm sorry for tenants, really, because they've got a government that in theory is working very hard on their behalf and it's not going to make a blind bit of difference for them. Well, thank you very much for joining me here at the Property Investor Show. We've been talking about the government communication this morning about Section 21. And please do share your views on uh, this. And if, if you feel it's going to affect you or change your attitude to being a landlord.